What's up developers, it's Dari here and I hope that you're having a great day since this video is dedicated to transitions and transformations in Tailwind. Before we continue on, I want to quickly let you know that you can support the channel through Patreon where you can get access to my private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out with our coding issues. So if you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. I want to change the layout of my screen for this video since we're going to refresh the page quite a lot. So what I want to do is to put my browser to the right here. So let me actually do that. All right. And let's make it smaller. And I don't need a sidebar in Visual Studio Code. So let me close it as well. And I actually think that this is quite better than what we had. We've all seen websites where you can hover over elements and the background color, text color, or font sizes change. And this is being done with a CSS pseudo class called Hover. Whenever a user hover with his mouse over certain elements, the element will change. And in order to test this out, we need to create an anchor first. Let's actually remove what we had from Flexbox and Grid. What I usually like to do is to wrap my anchor element inside a div. So let's do that. And let's create an anchor in here with the text of click me. The reason why I do this is because I can ally my div right in the middle of my screen. Let's give our div a class of w-4 forward slash 5, so a width of 80%. Let's set the margin left and right to auto, so mx-auto. So we get 10% to the left and 10% to the right of our element. Let's also add a text-center to center the element. And in order to add spacing between the element and the top of our page, let's set the padding, so the py-axis, to 12. I don't want to use paragraphs since hovering over paragraphs does not make sense and an answer does. So let's go to the local host that we have. Let's save our page. And well, I have a typo right there. Click me has been printed out, but it has no styling. So let's add styling to our href. And let me actually align it because it looks better. Let's give it a class of bg-blue-500. And let's change the text to text-white. Save it, and this starts to look better. I don't want to have my text aligned to the borders, so let's set the py equal to 4, and this will add padding to the top and bottom, and let's set the px equal to 8, and this will make the button wider. Then I'm going to add a class that we haven't used in this course before, which is called rounded. Save it, and as you can see, the borders of our button has changed. Tailwind provides nine basic rounded options, which will be the same as the text size. So you have rounded, small, medium, large, XL, double XL, and triple XL. What this will do is basically adding a border of 0.25 rem to our element. Now the last class that I want to add is text-xl. And this just made our button a little bit bigger. We can all tell that it's a button and it's clickable but it would even be better if we could add a hover effect when we hover over our button. When you want to define a hover in Tailwind, you got to use a prefix inside your class with the name of hover. So let's do that. Right here, let's say hover. Then we need to add a colon because we are going to set the hover effect equal to something. Now the value can be anything you want since you can apply hover with any Tailwind utility that you have. In our case, let's change the background color to bg-blue-300, which will be a lighter color than it is. If we save it and hover over our element, you can see that the background color does change from 500 to 300. Usually when you apply hover, you also be adding some kind of transition to your element in order to make the transition actually happen gradually. If we open our Tailwind tab and search for transition, we need the transition property, so the third value. And let me actually zoom out. All right. By default, an element has no transition. So the transition dash none is applied. But when you do want to apply transition, you usually do it on certain properties like the background color, text color, borders, shadows, and so on. If that's the case, you can apply the transition dash all class that we have right here. This will set transition property on for everything and the transition duration is 150 milliseconds. Right after our hover, let's add the transition dash all. Save it, go to our local host, hover our element, 
And as you could see, there's a pretty smooth transition that has been applied with a transition duration of 150 milliseconds. A cool thing about Tailwind is that you can get the option to limit the transitions for certain properties. If we go back to our Tailwind tab, you can see that we are allowed to add transition individually for the color, opacity, shadow, and transform. But this works a little bit different since you do need to specify the duration as well. So inside our code editor, let's change transition all to transition color. If we save it and go to our local host, you can see that we have no transition anymore since the transition dash color that we have has a default transition duration of zero. So what we could do is to go back to Tailwind and search for transition duration. You can see a total of eight duration classes that are available right here. It starts from 75 milliseconds and it can go up to 1000 milliseconds. The name is actually pretty straightforward. It's the duration dash the amount of milliseconds of the duration. So what we could do is to go right after our transition color and add a class of duration dash, let's say 200. Let's save it. Let's go back to our local host. And as you could see, a pretty smooth transition effect has been added. The last transition that I'd like to show you is the transition delay. As the name implies, this will delay the start of the transition. It works in the same exact way with the same exact durations, but instead of saying duration, we have to say delay dash 200. If we save it and hover over our answer, you can see that it takes 200 milliseconds before the hover effect is being shown. Whenever you want to apply animations in CSS, you're going to make use of keyframes. And Tailwind has four predefined utility classes that you can use for keyframes. And they are pretty easy to use. If we go back to Tailwind's tab and search for, let's say, animation, it's the first option. Scroll down. You can see the different types of animation properties or classes that we can use. We got animation-spin, ping, pulse and bounce. Now the spin class will rotate an object, as you could see right here, from zero degree to 360 degrees. And the time for it is one second. So it will spin one second linear infinite. Be aware that animations can only be applied to images or SVG values. Animate ping will ping out the image in one second from regular size to a scale of two. Animate plus will add two seconds transitions, as you could see right here, between one and 0.5 opacity. The last one, which is animate dash pounds, will add a one second, once again, as you could see right here, transition where the vertical position will go down with 25%. So the translate y axis will go minus 25. Like I said, in order to test them out, we need to use an image. So let's open a new tab and let's go to pixabay.com and well you can choose whatever image you like I'll just choose a random one that we have let's say right here let me open it in a new tab and let's copy the URL and let's close off both tabs right below our answer let's create an image tag let's paste our URL right there and let me align it on the line below as well we don't need the alt so let's replace it with a class and let's apply the class of animate-spin, which is the first one in the list. Let's save it. Let's go back to our local host. As you can see, something that I personally never use since I'm already getting a headache is that our image is being spinned all the time. Inside the code editor, we can replace animate-spin with animate-ping. Save it. The image is being pinged out and this is once again something that I'll probably never use. Then we got the pulse class, so animate pulse. And this will change the opacity from one to 0 0.5 every second. And the last one is the animate dash bounce class. And the image is being bounced down. And this is actually something that you might use because it is something that you see quite a lot on web pages when they have a landing screen with an arrow down where you can click on. The last topic of today will be transformation in Tailwind. In pure CSS, you can easily add size, location, rotation, or skew transformations. Tailwind made a couple default transformations that you can apply on certain elements. 
Whether you're adding transformation for the size, location, rotation, or skew, you got to keep in mind that you have to specify the default transformation class. If we remove the animate-bounce, we need to apply the transform class to the same element where we're going to add transformation to. Now that transform has been applied, we can continue on with scaling the image. And this is something that I personally like to use. It will zoom in an element by making the element bigger when hovering. And in order to define it, we need to apply the scale class. So let's go back to Tailwind step. Let's search for scale. It's the first one. And right here, you can see all the scaling classes that you can apply. You can apply it in every single direction, which is scale dash value. But if we scroll down, you can see that we can add scale on the X axis and the Y axis as well. If we add a hover, and let's say that we want to hover it to scale dash 125. And what this will do is basically scale the image to 125% of the origin of the image when we hover the element. If we save it and go to our local host, you can see that we indeed scaled the image, but the output is actually pretty ugly because there's no transition. So right inside of our class, the order does not really matter. You can add it right in front of the hover or right after. But what I personally like is to keep related classes together. So right after transform, let's add a transition dash all to it. Save it, test the output, and this is actually pretty good looking. You can also apply rotations to an element. And this is not in percentages like we have with the scaling, but this will be a degree. And the degree can be 1, 2, 3, 6, 12, 45, and 90. So what we could do is to replace the hover scale to 125 with rotate dash 45. Hover the image, and we have rotated the image with 45 degrees. You can also skew an image. And to be honest, it's pretty difficult to explain what this will do. So let me actually show it to you. Keep in mind that skewing can only be applied into the X and Y axis. Let's replace rotate dash 45 with skew dash x, so the x axis dash 6. Hover over our image, and the image has been skewed for 6 degrees. Since we're on the topic of moving elements, we can also apply translate on an element, and this will move an image to the x or y axis. So if we remove our skew one more time and replace it with translate dash x dash 4, hover over the image, and as you can see, we have moved our image to the right direction. This was it for this video where we went over hovers, animations, transitions, and transformations. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.